I started tattooing by 17 years old. Roy took me in as an apprentice. I had a fight for it. You know, I didn't get it easy. Came into a shop, he did a little butterfly on my breast, and I don't know, I was just hooked. I mean, it was just, I was so taken by tattooing. I was so in love with this, like, oh my God, you know, it was calling me. I'm adopted and I'm different, you know I mean? I'm, I don't know how to explain it, but just, I'm not the normal chick. That's why we got along so well. But we worked hard. You know, I worked hard. We worked seven days a week. Sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and tattoo, you know, when we lived on Broadway. Every time I turn around, somebody says, hey, did you die yet? You got AIDS? Or you're, you know, what the fuck? Look pretty uh, sad to me. Some stupid motherfuckers out there, but that's all part of this trade. Anyways, um, I was in high school course. and one kid had, was a classic flash of a snake. And I said, hey man, what, what's up with that? And he said, well, that, that's from Roy Boy in Gary, Indiana. And I was like, Roy Boy? What? He goes, you haven't heard about Roy Boy? I said, no, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Now, I don't mean to bore you, but we've got it all right here, America. Guns, guts, and death. No, it's not exactly paradise, but it is what I call home. That's like a 30 machine gun. He also had a 50 machine gun also. He's a big machine gun collector. This is another cool photograph of Roy. He um, has a trench coat on and he has another gun. I don't even know what kind of gun that is. There was rumors back in the day that he would take his guns and hide them in his trench coats and go for a walk and come back later. We don't know what he was doing. He was wild, very wild. He didn't play. So this is his gym down in the basement from the Gary shop, the one that burnt. He had hammer strength, he had Nautilus, he had all kinds of stuff, you know. He was totally into working out every day. That was like a religion for him. He loved to do flash and he was very, very good at flash. He freehand all these designs. He was awesome. I mean, he really could draw. And um, this is a Viper he bought me for my birthday. I was turned 35, and he was cheating on me, and he was trying to keep me staying around. He paid $35,000 cash for that car, and I think I kept it for a couple years, and then I ended up selling it, and I bought a big four-wheel drive truck, a big truck, like $40,000 in a paper bag. This was a cool photo shot that we did. We did this in a garage with Snap-on. Um, this was pretty crazy. This was a long shoot. People were up in the rafters watching, and I was very, very nervous. The cat was really, really good. This was Brazil. This was one of her best cats, and uh, she was really tame. And I mean, she was just sitting there. No one was even holding her with the leash. She was just, she was so great. Roy would shoot four or five rolls just for one or two good photos. That's, that's all he wanted. It didn't matter. As long as he got that one shot, that's what it took. People try to be like a Roy boy. And people try to be, that boy was a pinup girl before there were pinup girls. You know, people try to get there. And there's nothing wrong with that, but these guys were doing it, man. play tiddlywinks or dominoes dominoes would be just fine well fuck that maybe in a little while but right now i'm gonna finish this riff so sit the fuck down and listen pretty hot huh real hot 
You don't like that? <laughs> oh, it's fine. My body screwed up from riding horses and, and pulling these cats and tattooing and my arms, my legs, and, you know, having accidents after accidents after accidents. You know, I mean, I've been bucked off horses. I've been trampled by horses. I've been kicked. I've been, you know, dragged by cats. I've been bit. I've been wrecked on motorcycles, jet skis. I've been thrown off boats. I mean, I was, I was a daredevil back then. Now, as a kid, I knew that Gary Indiana was always bad news, but I had no idea about this Roy Boy thing. I mean, there were race cars and motorcycle, and he's clipping across in his boat in Lake Michigan doing 140. I mean, and there's tigers, and there's tattoos, and there's naked chicks, and there's everything that, that somebody would dig, you know? Roy, he was like a mastermind type guy. If he touched something, he could turn that into gold. Back in the day, like Roy shot so many photos for these magazines that people thought he owned them. You know, they would have to like fake stories with different people's names because he did so much for these magazines. Like they just, they couldn't have him in every page. You know what I mean? And a lot of people appreciate Roy because if, like I said, if it wasn't for Roy and these magazines, tattooing would never grown like the way it is today. You know, he really did a lot. And a lot of people don't even know really what he did because they had to hide it because they thought he would own the magazines. You know, that skull with the flames or that tattoo that says death before dishonor, Roy Boy was living that. You know, those were words that he lived by. So when you came in through that door and said, hey, can you do a tiger on me? No problem, I got one in the basement. It was a constant reminder of his lifestyle that was just beyond reproach, man. It was just there and in your face. And he didn't apologize for anything. He didn't apologize for Deb's nakedness. He didn't apologize for the wild tigers, the bad language, the bikes, the motor. He didn't apologize. He was there doing his thing. The guy almost died in a jet car crash. 500 horsepower, give me a break, you know, who does that? Yeah, he had a jet car that we bought down in Florida that went 300 miles an hour and he wrecked it and he hit three telephone poles up in the air. He was airborne, put a rod in his leg, he put a rod in his arm. He was in hospital, I think, for three months. So I took care of him for three months because he was really, really messed up. He was all smashed and compressed and from that crash. The tiger bit him in that area, so when the tiger did that, it opened up the wound and made it even worse. We seen him try to take the screw out of his own leg, you know, because it was hurting him and stuff, but he waited too long and he was not gonna let him take his leg, you know. So, he went the pill route. It was just in May when federal animal welfare officials seized Cooper's four tigers. They were confiscated from Cooper's tattoo shop in Gary, where he kept them in large cages for years. Yesterday, at the age of 64, Cooper died of liver failure, his family said. Cooper recently spoke about how he developed his love for tigers. You know, I'm a tattoo guy from, from ever, you know what I mean? And a lot of tattoo guys in the old days were, you know, from circuses and stuff, you know carnies and so on. So I was always drawn to the cats. Cooper also developed a following of celebrities to his tattoo parlor, including the likes of Cher, Lenny Kravitz, and Steven Tyler of Aerosmith. Michael Puente, WBEZ. So how old were you when you had uh, Cody? Okay. Was, and, and was he your only child? Yes, he okay. was my only child. I was 30 years old when I had Cody. Roy wanted me to wait a while. He didn't want me to ruining my body because I was doing photos and videos and, you know, PR pictures. And um, I'm glad I waited because if I didn't, I wouldn't have had Cody. Cody was special. Cody was, he was my diamond, you know. Um, I lost Cody five years ago. He passed away on Roy's motorcycle. I met Cody um, a couple of times at this shop because this was his shop and Deb still had the one in Lake Station. He was very proud of his heritage. He was very proud of his father, very proud of his mother. To be born into a legacy like that is tough because he had big shoes to fill. But he was filling them. You know, not only was he a big dude and he was good with motorcycles, he, he inherited that, a BMX bike rider, you know, he was great at that. But he was also a talented artist, you know. Three days before his graduation party, a lady was pulling out doing a California roll and she didn't stop and Cody slammed into her. I was devastated. Um, 
it was like somebody took a shotgun to my head and went boom. You know what I mean? My brain does a choom. You know what I mean? It's taken me years to get my brain back. You look at me and you think I'm okay, but I'm not. And not only that, after my son passed, I was taking Xanax and I was taking diet pills. And I never took pills before. I was D-balling and I didn't even know it. But it took me probably a couple years for my head to get better, for all that to go away. And I'm doing much better. I think better. I talk better. I still stutter a little bit and I get twisted a little bit sometimes, but I'm doing 100% better than I was before I was just couldn't get anything out. Now, I have to use everything that Roy taught me, and I have to go on by myself now. So now it's meant to be for me to run the legacy by myself, you know? I guess it's meant to be for me to go through different people in my life, you know, and, 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 and change and go through a whole nother set of people. I guess that's just the way it goes, and there's nothing else I can do except grab the reins and let's go. I'm ready. Thank you.